Welcome to the Campbell Museums. A mundane object like a button hook has many stories it can tell. And in this video, I explore just a few of these stories. So think of this video as the abridged history behind button hooks. This video is part of our What's in the Box series where I pull a box from storage and see what we find inside. So check out the box number four playlist for more. Please like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel to show us some love. You can also support the Campbell Museums by becoming a member. You know how reusable bags became the thing to market on? They're useful, everyone needs them, you can't have enough. Well, button hooks were once so useful that they were a marketing tool as well. You could receive one free with purchase of slippers, or you could be gifted a solid silver button hook to celebrate the 100th performance of a play. This once commonplace tool is now obsolete, but today we will explore the rise and fall of button hooks. To begin, what is a button hook? One 1876 patent concisely defined a button hook as an instrument to facilitate the buttoning of shoes, gloves, and like purposes. During the heyday of the button hook, which was the late 1800s through early 1900s, popular fashion was full of shoes, dresses, shirts, and gloves that were full of tiny little buttons that were a challenge to secure. It is useful to remember that the late Victorian and Edwardian eras were a period of formality and the ostentatious display of wealth. Society ladies were guided by strict rules of what was expected both in appearance and manners. Ladies in particular may have changed outfits several times per day since different outfits were required for different activities like walking, tea, or dinner. Now imagine having to fiddle with buttons multiple times a day. Even with the help of a servant, the button hook was key and if you couldn't afford servants, then just imagine trying to button your shoes all by yourself while wearing a corset. Well, the rise in buttons can be traced to our old friend, the Industrial Revolution. Two changes took place. First, the shoe industry shifted from handmade shoes to factory-made shoes. Newly invented sewing machines, like the one invented by Jean Ernst Metzeliger in 1883, could sew through much tougher leather and canvas than human hands could, so machine-made shoes were stiffer than before. As a result, button hooks became a necessary tool to pull the shoe buttons through the rigid buttonholes. And second, buttons became increasingly mass-produced making it more affordable to put them everywhere from head to toe. So perhaps this is why fashionistas of the day got a bit carried away. Now that we understand the need for the button hook, let's explore the design of the hook. Everyone had a button hook, rich or poor. While button hooks are simple in concept, they came in all shapes, sizes, and materials to accommodate one's budget. Early button hooks were often simple and utilitarian in style, and anyone could afford a basic button hook. Our button hooks are a very simple, small style, likely used for gloves. Because the button hook was so commonly used, many innovators sought to combine it with other small tools like corkscrews, knives, and bottle openers. Since these hooks were designed for portability and convenience, they lost some utility by being small and awkward to use compared to a full-sized version. Button hooks became increasingly ornate and decorative by the 1890s. Although useful, these ornamental button hooks were intended for display and to flaunt wealth, meaning they were most likely owned by the society ladies described earlier in the video. Button hooks were often included in stylish dressing table sets. As button hooks became more decorative in style, small button hooks were sometimes integrated into jewelry. Some women kept a hook on their chatelaine, which was an accessory that normally hung from the waist and held small tools and trinkets. Wearing a button hook as jewelry ensured one was always on hand. 
The proper way to use a button hook was to hook buttons. A user would insert the hook end of the implement into the buttonhole, grab the button with the hook, twist it slightly, and pull the button through the hole. But for fun, let's explore some documented alternative uses of button hooks. A 1901 newspaper article stated that, next to a hairpin, a button hook is the handiest tool in the world, and this is because you could often use them to pick locks. This article on how to pick locks notes that for certain types of locks, a button hook will usually do it. And this article describes how thieves entered a real estate office by using a button hook to pick the lock. Another story claimed a man used a button hook to pick a lock and help people escape from a burning theater. The most unconventional use of a button hook can be found at immigration stations such as Ellis Island. As immigrants arrived to the United States, they were inspected for evidence of, and I quote, loathsome or dangerous contagious diseases, which were grounds for exclusion. One of these diseases was trachoma, an infectious eye disease that could lead to blindness if left untreated. So, to check for trachoma, immigration officers would, and personally this really grosses me out, the officers would flip back the immigrant's eyelids using their finger or a button hook. This sounds oddly unsanitary, coming from people who were trying to do so-called health inspections. In the early 1900s, men's and women's fashion became much less formal and sported few, if any, buttons. Button boots were slowly replaced by laced boots or shoes with fewer or no buttons. This article from 1901 asks, what has become of the button hook? Once upon a time, every other man you met would have a button hook on his key ring, but that day has passed and the button hook has vanished, presumably because button shoes are no longer popular. An additional blow to the button was the rise of the zipper during the 1920s and 30s. By the mid 1900s, button hooks were left to languish long forgotten in junk drawers and antique shops. Mundane objects can contain big stories, and these button hooks had a lot to say. What other stories might they tell? Thanks for watching, and please consider supporting us by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and becoming a member of the Campbell Museums.